Now, even though Lithuania seems to be a pretty good sized country right in the middle of Eastern Europe, it seems to be one of the most overlooked nations to play as in all of EU4. And that's because a lot of players want to immediately form the Commonwealth, and it's much easier to do so with Poland. Uh, the only way to do that with Lithuania is the old fashioned way, and that's by claiming the throne. Not to mention that most of its provinces are under the Orthodox religion, and our state religion is Catholicism. So you have a bunch of religious rebels that go throughout uh, the very beginning until you get religious ideas. You also can't forget about Muscovy who's continuing to gain power in the east and if you do not stop them they will snowball and they will be unstoppable. Now in terms of goals, I kind of have too many to really discuss right now. The only one that I have set in stone is to destroy Muscovy because our whole campaign really relies on destroying these guys. Like we said, they can be very powerful and the longer we wait, the scarier and the more difficult it's going to be. And at some point, it it'll be impossible. If, if they are able to take over most of Novgorod, Novgorod and continue to expand and colonize towards the east, then yeah, it's going to be too difficult to take them down. Uh, Poland will be our biggest friend. They will be our biggest ally. They, they start off automatically uh, pretty friendly towards us because of they're the same religion and the historical friend bonuses, which is nice. Now, obviously, if I am to destroy Muscovy, I'm going to want to colonize in their place. I want to take over as the new Russia uh, but Lithuania style and I want to take over all of Northern Asia. That's one possible That's one possible goal that I could have in mind the other one which seems a little bit crazy And the reason is because you know We don't have a super good trade node here in Kiev and I'd like to expand up towards the north um, Obviously the Novgorod uh, trade node is much better with 8.9 ducats of trade value Then we have 7.6 here in the uh, I can't even see what is this the Baltic Sea and then the North Sea is a little bit better, but not that, actually, you know what, North Sea is actually pretty crappy. But this is going to sound crazy, but I really want to colonize. I really want to colonize the Americans, and uh, that's, that's kind of what I want to do. I mean, obviously, you know, making sure this campaign goes smoothly and making sure that I survive as Lithuania, which I think I can do if I destroy Muscovy fast enough, then yeah, I think if I had any preferences, anything leaning in my head, I kind of want to go up towards uh, the Scandinavian region and get something out here in Norway. That way we can colonize. Or maybe go and attack Denmark here. That might be a little bit crazy, but I just thought I'd mention it to you guys because it is kind of something on my mind that I want to try to do. Uh, we have to wait quite a long time anyways. We have a while to wait um, until we have to colonize. Obviously, Iberia will be colonizing very soon off the bat, uh, but I really want to play because it's El Dorado, and I, and I want to play the, colony, the colonizing game, so we're going to try it. Uh, but it, again, we're not going to be focusing on that just too much right now. I'm going to attack the north. I'm not really going to worry about the hordes because we have a big religious problem. First of all, we're okay. We've got tolerance of heretics, uh, which is orthodox and Coptic. We have no tolerance of heathens. Um, negative two, yes, that's anything, Confucianism, Buddhism, uh, Sunni, Shia, all, all that sort of stuff. So moving over just towards the hordes could be a bad idea with already having a lot of kind of religious tension. Now, it's, it's, not, it's not too bad. I mean, obviously we're getting a negative religious penalty bon or religious unity bonus or I guess penalty or whatever you want to call it uh, because we're only 80% of our, our country is unified religiously. Um, it's causing us a bit of national unrest. Uh, it's only at 0.39, but it could get much, much worse if we decide to attack the Golden Horde or Crimea. I, you know, I've looked at a lot of different strategies here for Lithuania, and it seems like a lot of them are out of date. Um, they're not exactly in the art of war and post-era of, of EU4, because the game has really changed drastically. So we've got a lot of different opportunities here, and we could do a lot of different things. Uh, first of all, I, it's, it's crucial that I ally Poland. I have to ally Poland. Now, no, I don't plan on forming the uh, Commonwealth... Again, Lithuania seems to be super, super overlooked by so many EU4 players uh, because it's so difficult. It's much difficult of a start, and a lot of EU4 players just want to get as much land as possible. So they start off as Poland, and then they just automatically pretty much get the PU with Lithuania, and then they can form the Commonwealth, obviously. And then obviously, uh, Poland also starts off with a march and a vassal. So uh, good for them. I don't want to do that, though. I want to, I want to give... I want to give Lithuania the spotlight for the first time ever because Lithuania does have the opportunity of being a new Russia and if, if they be a strong enough Russia, they could maybe even for, just get into the Scandinavian region and if we're lucky, maybe colonize Canada or something like that. So no, I, I, I don't think I want to personally form the Commonwealth. First of all, I can't. It's not as easy for me. I have to just do it the old-fashioned way and go ahead and uh, claim their throne. 
I, uh, I don't know if I'm going to do that. I mean, why do that? First of all, let's go ahead and take the mission of forming an alliance with Poland. That'll be pretty easy. And uh, let's just go ahead and send it over towards them. And boom. Awesome. So we'll be able to get that. And we'll get the royal marriage up with them because they're going to be our biggest friend. They're pretty much going to be, I believe, one of our biggest allies. I want to take over the, uh, Lav the Livonian Order as well as the Teutonic Order as well. Now, we also could possibly ally Riga here. They are a small nation that I could easily uh, vassalize. They are automatically allied to the Hansa, which is, I, I, don't, I don't mind. I mean, we could go ahead and step on the Hansa's face a little bit here. I, it's not that big of a deal. So let's go ahead and check our rivals really quick. Also, you know, really quick, I am obviously running quite a few mods. I'm running the, uh, the bigger diplomacy window mod. I'm running the simple borders uh, mod, as well as the purple UI, which I personally really like. And then uh, I'm running one more, but I can't remember exactly. Oh, I'm running the uh, Terra Incognita, the better, better Terra Incognita, or whatever it is. So now that you guys know that. So, not the greatest start ever. We started off with three rivals. That doesn't always happen, but that's fine. Uh, I don't care if Denmark hates us. We're going to go ahead and just rival all of them back. I Maybe I should, maybe... I don't want to really rival the Golden Horde, though. I don't want to attack the Golden Horde. I'm gonna definitely, I'm gonna definitely rival back Muscovy because I do plan on stepping on their face a little bit here. Now, who else could I? I would like to rival Novgorod, but I don't exactly know if that's the right idea. Now, ideally, of course, what I'd want to be able to do is vassalize Muscovy, and Muscovy is eventually going to get claims on all of these lands right here. So I could possibly just vassal feed them. Boom, boom, boom. That would be nice, and it would be easy, but I, I don't know. I mean, who knows if, if I'd actually be able to do that sort of thing. Now, who, who could I possibly rival that might not be bad? I, I know that I have to worry about the Ottomans. The Ottomans are a big worry, especially because they do border um, a... a province or a nation that Poland has a sphere of influence over. I guess, you know what, let's go ahead and just rival back the Golden Horde for now. We could always switch that up later if we really wanted to, uh, but we'll see. Crimea, now a lot of strategies told me to go and attack Crimea, the Crimea, but I, I don't want to do that personally because the Crimea has no, there's nothing there for me. There really isn't anything for There's nothing in the trade node, as well as there's no good base tax, base tax provinces really there. Uh, besides in, you know, this is a pretty good one. This isn't bad at all. Uh, as well as we do have Genoa down here, who could be a possible ally, even though they do feel threatened towards us. But anyways, let's go ahead and jump into this. There's nothing really we can do in terms of the religious aspect of this game. Uh, as you can see, it's going to take way too much time, and I might as well not piss off um, the people even more by having a missionary take up to, what is this, like... I don't know, five years or something like that to finish that off. Let's go ahead and get our first great general. Let's cross our fingers. Oh my gosh, you gotta be kidding me. Six fire? Okay, I, I understand this fire isn't as good in the beginning of the game, but still, six fire is awesome. And then having that one shock is still good enough. Holy shit. Well, we got lucky. We're also making pretty good money as the... Uh, as, as the Lithuanians, so we can definitely get our force limit up to its highest point. We can get definitely 27. Um, how, what's, what's, what do we, what is our, our army composition looking like right now? Currently, we have 16 infantry and 5 knights, uh, and we are the Eastern technology. We are not Muslim, so we can't go over, I believe, is it 50% uh, without the penalty? Uh, yeah, I think something like that. It might, that might be wrong, but I, I know that the hordes obviously get like 100% or something like that. That's all that matters. I can't be doing that. Also, uh, by the way, I, I'm so glad to be back in Europe. I know you guys have been really suggesting that I play back in Europe uh, for quite a long time now, and it is nice to be able to kind of watch as, uh, I don't know, just kind of examine uh, examine Europe as a whole uh, in a pretty okay position. I mean, we're pretty safe, but uh, towards the in the next hundred years, it's going to be definitely a pretty big deal. So I have one free diplomat. I'm going to go ahead and just begin to automatically start to fabricate a claim on Muscovy. Um, and what province is better to probably fabricate? Oh my gosh, look at that five base tax right there. Hell yeah, baby. That is what I'm talking about. So let's make sure that we uh, fabricate a claim on this province here. I'm not even going to attempt to pronounce that name at all. 1.29 chance of discovering us. More than likely it won't happen. Two-star general. That's so awesome. So yeah, uh, like I said, we are finally back in Europe, and if you've been following me for a while, I have not played in Europe for quite a bit, and I'm excited to see exactly how this plays out. I mean, now we actually get a nice little vision to see what's going on. Uh, I, I do have to kind of keep my eye on the papacy. If I wanted to, I can participate in these new, well, not really new mechanics. They are new to Art of War, but uh, I've yet to play a... Uh, 
a a let's play series at least. I mean, I've played my own personal series, is uh, messing with the papacy and stuff like that. But uh, yes, something to keep in mind. So Poland has entered our military alliance. Perfect. Let's go ahead and boost the speed up to speed four. And now I will shut the hell up. So we got ten prestige and twenty five diplomatic power. Um, now I've got a few strategies here. What I'm thinking about doing is actually I might wait at least a year or two uh, to see exactly what plays out here um, in the east. Muscovy could declare war on someone like Novgorod um, or, or something else. Also, you know, I never decided. I think I might as well. Ugh, they are allied to the Lithuanian, the Litho the, I'm sorry, the uh, Livonian order here. I, I might as well send over an, an alliance and attempt to vassalize them. If I can, that would be a nice, easy province to take uh, and not have to waste my administrative power on. It might not be terrible. I mean, does Riga have any claims? No, they don't. Okay. Genoa wants to send over us an alliance, but I'm not really, I don't think I really need that. And, and yeah, I'd rather not. Let's roll a marriage. Uh, Poland, 5 prestige and 25 diplomatic power. I like it. Okay, I, I guess I could wait for them to do it, but... Mm, uh, well, at speed 4, it shouldn't take too much longer. So, uh, England declared war on Castile. That is really early for England to be declaring war on Castile. What the hell is going on? Did France, uh, did France ally Castile? No. Holy shit. Leads a personal union with Navarra. Uh, why did you do that? Who are you? You're not allied to anybody. That was strange. Okay, well, I don't know exactly how that's going to work out for you, but it does. I don't think it's going to work out very well. Is maybe Castile is trying to go and grab these two provinces? I I've never seen that before. Uh, that is pretty new. So boom, uh, we finished off that mission. The Hansa has entered an, an, an alliance. We're going to see a bunch of different uh, pop-ups like that. So uh, Sweden wants us to support their independence. I think not, because when I'm supporting independence, I cannot go to war with someone else. So I cannot take this up. I don't care if they hate my guts anyways. I, I don't really care. They've got friendly attitude towards me, so that's somewhat good. I could also possibly ally somebody else. How is Hungary feeling towards me? Hungary somewhat likes me. Um... Teutonic Order is supporting independence for Lithuania. Or I'm sorry, for Sweden. Well, Lithuania, what the hell am I talking about? Uh, Bohemia wants to form an alliance, but who are you rival to? And who am I stepping on by doing that? Uh, Hungary, Teutonic, Poland. Oh, no, you're, no, I can't. I can't ally Bohemia. You're, you're rivaling and your enemies are, are Poland, so that would cause too many interesting... No, and I cannot ally to Novgorod either. Hmm. Yeah, but I'm, I think I'm going to definitely take this first year to kind of feel out this world, figure out exactly where's the best place to attack. Now, in terms of my king, he's doing okay. Uh, I still have enough ducats to be able to hire an advisor, all three advisors, in fact. Let's go ahead and go for the yearly prestige because that's the only one level one. Diplomatic reputation, I guess. And reinforcement speeds. Okay, so only one level level one uh, advisor in each one of those categories. Let's go ahead and improve my military um, a bit. So now it's a little bit spread to all sevens down the line. Okay, so we've got four four one. We've got no legal error. Error. I'm sorry. Uh, so hopefully the royal marriage with Poland should help that out a bit. We do have a. Oh, is that us? Yes, it is. We have a trade dispute already with Muscovy. We'll see. Now, where do they start off? I believe they start off with about twenty thousand men. Uh, Muscovy does. We have to look at their allies as well. So we're here at 26,000 and we have Muscovy at 19,000. Now who have you allied? Nobody yet. Yeah, I imagine that you're just going to have a lot of vassals. Um, and we might want to wait until we have to. We cannot just jump in there one mano y mano, um, even if someone like Poland is, is to help us. Uh, secondly, I think I'd like to maybe, who has the less, I guess... Livonian Order does have the least amount of allies. Let's go ahead and fabricate a claim on them because it could be a little bit more likely that we might take them over quicker. This is a lot of free land here and also gives us more border, uh, more pro provinces to be able to... I guess a lot of provinces, in fact, actually, to be able to fabricate on other nations, preferably Sweden. I'd love to make a line straight across Scandinavian region again and colonize. I know that's crazy, but I kind of want to. I kind of want to have a colony in Canada named uh, New Lithuania. How awesome would that be? I think that'd be pretty awesome. I still have a lot of ducats, so I can go quite a bit over my force limit. I'll go ahead and hire at least one more cavalry, but that's about it for now. If I want to, I can hire a few mercs, but we'll see. So there goes Sweden uh, declaring their independence. Who decided to join in on that? Um... Oh, wow, you've got quite a bit. Poland is actually fighting against you, so it doesn't... I don't like this. You know, I, I, I do want Sweden to get their independence. I definitely would prefer that. 
Uh, QQ declared war. Okay, so we do are we are going to see notifications from the Middle East, but I don't plan on expanding towards this region too much, just because we've had enough. Uh, really, I mean, I've had enough in, in previous campaigns uh, dealing with the Middle East, and I'd like to kind of just do an all new region here. So new missions. Um, again, see, I can form the Polish Lithuanian Commonwealth, but I don't think we're going to do that. Uh, we'll see what happens. We'll see if we see a good opportunity. You want us to crush the Golden Horde, improve relations with the uh, Livonian Order. Or create a proper fleet. Well, seeing how I only have one province that order uh, that, that borders the uh, the Black Sea. I'm sorry, I was just like choked there. Uh, I don't think I'm going to do that. Loose prestige or yearly prestige for uh, some loss of ducats and loss of administrative power. I can go ahead and do that. So we need to keep our eye on here at Novgorod. Uh, you are allied to Sweden, so I'm sure Sweden would join in. But if you guys start to significantly lose this war. Well, first of all, I can tell you right now, Muscovy is going to come in and try to eat you up. And that seems it seems only natural. It seems like a smart choice on their part. Uh, but I, I would like to join in and try to maybe carpet siege and get a little bit out of the way. Okay, so more, more claims. We got our claim first on Muscovy. Uh, we have one on, we have almost, we're still fabricating, we know, we don't have anything on the Novgorod, so we've got to go for it right now. On Novgorod, we've got to get that claim up as fast as possible, more than likely, uh, they will discover us with that 3.11% chance of discovery. Uh, heir to our throne, okay, so a 4 3 one. Uh, slightly not as good, uh, pretty, uh, kind of a, a downgrade to our king, in the diplomacy category at least. Crimea has declared war on Theodora, okay, so there goes Theodora. Muscovy, there it goes. Muscovy's declared war on Novgorod. Uh, now you have no allies. So it looks like Sweden didn't decide to join in. I'm, I imagine that Sweden is, in fact, probably, yeah, they didn't want to join in. So we've got it. We, oh, we don't have the claim. We only, we're only at 6%. So what we might want to do is let them go ahead and eat away at each other. Let's go ahead and check the ledger uh, and jump into whoever decides to lose the war. It might be better to go ahead and just go to war with Muscovy right now, depending on exactly whether manpower goes to and, and so on and so forth. Uh, we're at, there are 20,000 men with manpower, about 20,000 as well. Uh, on the other hand, Novgorod is down here at 10,000 with only 10,000 manpower. Ah, I wish we would have got this claim up first, but that's okay. Uh, they also have themselves a two-star general. Uh, our fire shot, our fire, fire value is a bit better. Oh gosh, there goes the Burgundian uh, event. The king of Burgundy has died um, already. Venice has declared war, war in Ragusa. Okay, so just because he's died doesn't necessarily mean. So they're in a regency council, but we we don't. Oh, there it goes. Okay, so Austria. Austria and France uh, just kind of naturally divided up that territory. This is really early for that event to fire. Surprisingly enough, that's really, really early. Okay, so Crush, I can't, no, I can't do any of these missions. None of these missions really benefit me in any way. Uh, again, I might want to hire a few mercs. We shall see, though. How old is my heir? Is he of age? He's, ooh, he's zero years old, so we have to keep my king um, safe. We really have to keep my king safe. I don't want to lose any prestige. Okay, so are we ready for this? Almost. Bavaria declared war. Okay, so we're going to see a lot of those pop-ups to kind of keep in mind. Uh, keep that in mind. Technically, they're losing their war, but I'm sure they've, they're going to win it. They're going to start to win it. Now, do we want to wait the next 75% for this? Well, I guess 60% of this claim to be fabricated before we go to war with Novgorod. I, I'm okay with that. It really depends on... If Muscovy's weak enough, I'd, I'd much rather just go to war with Muscovy right now. It really depends, though, is Poland going to willing to join in? Riga, Riga is, for some reason. I don't know why at all, exactly. Poland is not. Now, I might want to ally somebody else here. Livonian order feels threatened, but I could ally them. It, it might be a pretty good ally. How about the, the uh, Teutonic order? They would as well. The only thing is, I eventually... Well, I'd have to just get up the alliance and then, you know, be willing to dissolve it at some point. Might not be a terrible idea, but who's a little bit more powerful? That's the thing. Um, I wish there was a like a little number on there. I wish there was a little number on that window just saying exactly how powerful each one is. Uh, here's the Teutonic at 12,000. Uh, Livonia somewhere down at the bottom. I imagine it's something to do with their war that they're in. I believe they're in a war, right? Well, I, I don't know exactly. All right, guys, looks like I'm going to have to stop right there. Uh, please, if you guys enjoyed this series, if you if you guys are liking the EU4 videos, please leave a like. It really helps out tremendously. You guys know the drill. It helps out amazingly, and I love you forever for it. Anyways, guys, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you guys in part two.